All right. Okay. Okay. Let's get right into this. So first of all, it's about three in the morning and I'm making this video. Why am I making this video? Because I'm trying to get a point across. Uh, so a little disclaimer before I get into this, I am not any sort of doctor or in the medical field at all. Um, but I have been through and seen a lot in the medical field um, and also the psychiatric field. So first off, well, what this video is about is I do not believe ADHD actually exists. And second of all, uh, what is my diagnosis? So in the past, I have been misdiagnosed with multiple different disorders, which were not accurate. And then I got reevaluated by about uh, four different psychiatrists and they all came to the same conclusion uh, that at the time I had depression and I had PDD-NOS, pervasive developmental disorder, not otherwise specified, which is a form of high functioning autism or autism spectrum disorder. So, uh, I am not the only one that I know of that has been misdiagnosed within the psychiatric field. I know and I have encountered plenty of people who have been misdiagnosed once, twice, three times, a number of times, and it wasn't small mistakes, it would be big major mistakes. Uh, and the thing is, is it's obviously true within the psychiatric field and also uh, the physical and medical field in any sort of field, there's people that make mistakes, professionals that make mistakes, but I feel and I notice that in the psychiatric field, there's quite often mistakes. And also I feel of my observation for the psychiatric field, I feel there's been minimal, very, very, very minimal progress uh, in improving mental health and like psychiatric, like, um, yeah, psychi psychiatric help, psychiatry, any of that, um, and discovery. Uh, compared to, let me take a step back. I've been saying uh, a lot. I need to try to work on myself and say that less. So I'm going to try to not say uh the rest of the time. I'll try my best. So my point was, where was I? Yes, my point was, I do not believe, what was my point? All right, sorry about that. Um, it's three in the morning during quarantine, you know, coronavirus quarantine. I live in Massachusetts. It's like the f third or fourth or fifth highest cases of states, you know, pretty crazy out here. So I'm gonna go right back into what I was saying, which was, I believe it was something of the sort of, yeah. So I noticed there was a lot more progress within the physical medical field, right? Not psychiatry. You see the technology, the improvements, uh, it just the improvements of technology and in everything and the discovery of, yeah, just pretty much everything, uh, not everything, but you know what I mean. There's been a lot of progress in the physical medical field and there's been minimal progress uh, on the psychiatry field. And another thing I noticed in the psychiatry field is there obviously have been breakthroughs and stuff like that and a lot better treatments than there were uh, back in the day. But something that needs to be taken account for is I completely lost my train of thought. See, that's like ADHD. But wait, it's not ADHD because I have autism. And I'm going to go into my next point because I completely forgot my last point, which is ADHD has a lot. Basically, the almost all the symptoms or all the symptoms are a part of borderline personality disorder. Bipolar, autism, and certain other disorders. 
So the way I see ADHD is, I think, for the early stages of psychiatry of like brainstorming what could potentially be a disorder or whatever, uh, I think that is reasonable to have ADHD exist in that time, but I don't think it's remotely applicable, applicable and realistic or logical nowadays at all. The reason for that is it could either be um, that people have one of those other disorders. I have friends and people that have encountered that were at first misdiagnosed with like ADHD and or uh, other disorders. And then it turned out they had bipolar or autism or, or borderline personality disorder or they never had ADHD or whatever. So it could be that could be that they actually have a different condition and they were misdiagnosed or weren't diagnosed with that other uh, condition yet or just were just, yeah. And another thing too is there's a possibility the person can be simply intelligent and not interested in whatever subject that's being taught at school or whatever is happening. And also another thing to remember is not everybody learns the same way and not everybody learns at the same pace. Not everyone has the same IQ, the same interests, the same culture, the same personality. There's a lot, of, lots of different factors on why or why not people may be interested or focus or in certain settings. And another another aspect you have to understand too is a person themselves, like. Different people perceive others differently, and that's also what can make diagnosing people difficult. Um, but I think in this scenario, it's a big aspect that needs to be taken account. Uh, not only that, but all other things I said before. And another thing too is you don't know if the person doesn't have the correct nu nutrients uh, maybe they're def deficient in certain natural vitamins uh, because they're not getting the right food in their body or they're not getting enough exercise or maybe they have too much exercise. It, like there's a lot of different factors or not enough sleep or too much sleep and everybody's body is different and you don't know if they have any sort of uh, physical disorders that can impact their mental health um, or mental ability or agility um, and it could yeah so th there's lots of different variables I feel when it comes to ADHD it's more so a thing like that a lot of people placebo the existence of it so another interesting part about it is a lot of people say that I've noticed that have ADHD um, or people who have spoken who have ADHD or whatever, they're like, oh, yeah, like, the, I'm, I'm impersonating a person with ADHD right now. Oh, yeah, like, when uh, I took the Adderall, like, medication for ADHD, um, whenever I take Adderall, it helps me focus uh, a lot more to do my college homework or whatever, blah, 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 blah. But the thing is, though, I'm not going to name any names or say anything like that uh, but I have seen and heard a number of stories of also people who do not have ADHD um, who have used ADHD medication to help them focus and it worked the same way uh, as people who do not have ADHD is that a coincidence absolutely not I think it's just a case where neither of them have ADHD so another aspect about ADHD is I feel a lot of people with ADHD use with ADHD use it as as it use it as an excuse. There's I don't know if uh, what country any of you people are from that are watching, but I live in the United States and in the public school system and other systems, they have a 504 or IEP plan, which is basically a plan that's in place to help those with 
certain disabilities. So it could be ADHD, uh, autism, Down syndrome, um, bipolar, borderline personality disorder, whatever, whatever, um, dyslexia, lots of different disabilities. And when it comes to ADHD, I noticed there were a lot of people who would utilize those services like the 504 IEP plan and they yeah they, they would just use, utilize it to the max and always give excuses oh yeah like I wasn't able to focus or do this or do that or do that uh, because of my ADHD and then I see like I, I have met people on all sorts of the spectrum of autism, bipolar, and certain other disorders. But for the ones who are more better off or higher functioning, able to manage this, their disorder more so better, what I notice is that it's possible to maximize your ability to do really anything. So, for me, I was diagnosed with autism my, when I was uh, 17 years old. But before then, I had an IEP um, because of like depression or whatever. But, and potential learning a disability, there wasn't anything clear uh, on what the diagnosis was uh, before then or it was misdiagnosis. But my point is, is I never used the services for the 504 IEP. It was put in place because my mom wanted it to be in place and the school recommended it. And th there was only one time I used it though, which was for, uh, I forget what that test is to get into college, um, but that was it. Like when it, when it came to the MCAS, which is the standardized testing, and any sort of exams or anything like that in high school, I just never utilized the services because what I wanted to do with my disorder um, is I wanted to, once I learned that I had it at age 17, I was able to figure myself out and figure out what am I doing wrong or quote unquote wrong, uh, what is not exactly normal, what behavior, what, um, how could I better myself and how could I avoid these hindrance uh, on myself. And because of that, I was able to get to a point that my, dis my disability is not noticeable anymore um, if I choose to mask myself, which means to not show really any of my symptoms of autism. But so my point is, people with any sort of disorders can maximize their potential in themselves and improve themselves once they are aware what is wrong. I noticed, sorry I keep on going back and forth on random topics, uh, but it all, you can put it all together and understand or more or less understand what I'm saying. Uh, in regards to the negative aspects of psychiatry and the ridiculousness and placebo, placebo of ADHD. But, wait. Just because I said that, that made me confused. It is three... 12 in the morning and I completely forgot what I was just about to say. I believe I was just about to say that I was going to... Um, see, I said... Uh, well, let's move on. I'll, I'll keep on flowing. So... Oh yeah, so you can maximize your potential, blah, 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 and oh yes, I remember, and I was, before, like, 
about a few days ago, I watched some other YouTubers that are autistic they, that were talking about their experience and their symptoms or whatever with autism. I saw one autistic YouTuber in particular, um, and he was diagnosed, I, I'm not sure what exact age, but in maybe his late 20s, early 30s or something like that. And he was explaining what he noticed are the symptoms of autism. And he was diagnosed with the high functioning autism and or specifically Asperger's. And he was explaining how it doesn't, um, how other people around him were judging him and because of his diagnosis, like relatives, friends or whatever, and like claiming that he's just like placeboing it, he's over exaggerating, um, blah, blah. But this autistic YouTuber believes that he actually found himself and was able to understand himself and himself in the past a lot more uh, because of his diagnosis. And because of it, he, like others around, thought he was purposely acting weird and placeboing it. Um, but he claims he's not. He's just being more of himself and anything like that. So the way I see all that is... I think he was ingrained to mask his symptoms and adjust to the everyday culture of society and how quote unquote normal people act. So all those symptoms over time kind of disappeared or were kind of on the down low in the back of his mind. Um, so I think it rejuven he he chose to rejuvenate those symptoms once he was diagnosed and i do believe he actually did placebo it uh to a certain extent i think he did have underlying symptoms um that weren't showing before but i think he chose to try to enhance those symptoms and display those more often than they would be in actuality. So when it comes to him, he, from the observers around him, he is now seemingly more autistic, but which I believe, as I said earlier, is you can choose with your disorder to either improve yourself or placebo it and use it as an excuse um, and I feel with his case he is choosing to placebo it enhance and uh, enhance certain symptoms he has so I think with me and certain other people that I know that have high functioning autism and certain other disorders like bipolar or whatever we chose when we figured out our, we had our disorders um, and were properly diagnosed, we chose to improve ourselves and work around those disorders. Um, it doesn't mean we're not acknowledging the existence of it. We're just choosing to improve upon ourselves and not using it, use it as an excuse, um, which I feel there's people out there like that YouTuber who don't understand you can improve yourself um, and that you don't have to and you shouldn't or not shouldn't but you don't have to placebo it and when it comes to ADHD people with ADHD is I feel it's a similar idea to that but in the first place ADHD simply doesn't exist they're just trying to um, enhance those sort of symptoms um, to make it try to exist as a disorder or it could be um, a thing where it's they already have those symptoms because they already have borderline personality disorder blah 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 and I looked up like I looked up um, 
I did a little research and I look up like autism and ADHD and it says overlapping and uh, overlapping sy symptoms and it says like a lot of them, most of them. And then another article says ADHD, bipolar disorder or borderline personality disorder. So yes, borderline personality disorder and bipolar and schizophrenia and, and um, autism have a lot of similar symptoms, especially when it comes to autism and, um, yeah, yeah, they have a lot of similar symptoms, but they're actually legitimate, um, they're, they're real disorders versus ADHD is, it's just non-existent, um, so I definitely believe there's going to be a lot of people angered about this video and they're like, who the hell is this autistic kid that is trying to make sense of this and trying to criticize and put down these people with this disorder, ADHD, blah, blah, blah. But you got to look at it and all these perspectives um, and all these pointers that I made. And I did make it in a very um, all over the place way. I did not construct this well at all. Um, and I improvised this whole video, but if it were to be someone who is a lot more well-spoken and or I decided to construct this with a nice essay and then speak it out, then you would be able to understand my points a lot more. And you, I believe, would have a lot higher chance in agreeing with me. So... One last thing that I wanted to point out is in regards to my disorder. And that'll bring us back to the whole point on psychiatry and how I think it's potential ADHD will potentially maybe one day not even exist anymore in the diagnosis. So... There was one day a couple weeks ago on Reddit. I don't know if you know the website Reddit, but it is a forum where you can discuss pretty much anything. Um, and there's sub forums, meaning, or it doesn't matter. I don't need to find Reddit. You could figure it out yourself. Google it, you know. Um, so I posted a video saying how I have PDD NOS my specific version of autism or whatever um, and then someone replied saying isn't specifically PDD NOS an oxymoron lol then I said not really there's I think about five different kinds of autism and PDD NOS is one of them then she said you missed the point which is ironic in and of itself the NOS stands for not otherwise specified, so stating specifically PDD not otherwise specified is indeed an oxymoron. Regardless, PDD NOS no longer exists. It's not a recognized disorder, disorder or diagnosis. All previous diagnostic codes pertaining to autism are now covered under ASD in both DSM-5 and ICD-11. Those are diagnoses, um, medical books. And then she said, source, I'm a licensed psychologist and diagnostician. And I said, yeah, I know. They made everything into ASD, Autism Spectrum Disorder. And I just continue to use the term Asperger's, PDD, NOS, etc. because that helps specify people in ASD and the autism spectrum is extremely broad and even in those subcategories of Asperger's, PDD, NOS and other forms of autism, I believe the field of psychology is constantly redefining terms, diagnoses, etc. And I believe they made very little progress in the field, especially in comparison to physical health science. I see the changing definitions and diagnoses and 
categorization within organized within the field of psychology as just a play on words, meaning like they're just changing up words um, most of the time. It's just them trying to be more organized and seem intellectual when in reality almost no progress is being made in the mental health field. There Also, there's pl still plenty of vague diagnoses still existing within mental health, such as psychotic disorder not otherwise specified. So I don't believe it's a big deal, really, whether to go by older or newer diagnoses, also considering anyways, tons of psychologists and mental health professionals misdiagnose people. So another couple things I wanted to add, add to that is, or one main thing is, this person definitely thinks or I, I forget what she answered next. I don't have the screenshot of the next reply, but I remember she just completely disregarded what I said uh, and made it seem like I was a moron, even though the reality is, is why is she acting so smart when they're... Uh, you'll see. It's going to continue being reworded, redone, um the autism spectrum disorder and diagnoses and uh, or meaning terms and that'll be the same with a lot of different other terms within the psychiatric uh, field and i feel most of the time it'll continue being just replacing words it's like um i don't know how, what other sim what simile to use but it's just or I'd say it's kind of like someone using the same project they used in high school each year for a different class and then also using it in college each year for a different class and but they're just changing it up a little um so yeah but when in reality they just didn't change the project at all but, and from her to what she wants to make it seem is as if she made progress, but she doesn't want to admit that there was no progress or improvements in their ability or project at all. It was just always the same or basically the same. Maybe they made a little bit more improvements once they grew old or maybe grammar or spelling mistake or whatever just minor improvements. So that's the way I see the psychiatry field and ADHD and all that. Um, let me just double check to make sure if there's anything I am forgetting about in regards to my points on ADHD. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, I have a little sim little simile right here. So I had a 504 plan and then an IEP and I never used it, but people with ADHD did. It's a similar idea to someone who is on welfare and can work, but they choose not to because they're lazy or they had a false excuse, then they made themselves believe it by saying it over and over again. Same idea with ADHD. They're just making themselves believe they have something, or they actually do have something and it's not ADHD. Um, or it's those other aspects that I've mentioned before, deficient in certain vitamins, sleep, not interested, could be anything. So let's see, what else is there? I just wanna make sure I got everything. Yeah, so I hope you all enjoyed. I'm not sure if this was well put at all because it is quite late. It is about 3.30 in the morning.
Thank you for listening. I'm going to make a lot more stuff about psychology on my channel. This is going to be posted on YouTube and it might be even posted on Facebook. And another thing you might be thinking is if you do watch my other content on YouTube, um, my music or whatever, you'll be like, oh yeah, no, he's definitely autistic. What is he saying? He acts so normal, blah, 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 or that he seems so normal, blah, blah, blah. The thing is, if you meet me in person and I don't know, we're acting normal, having a normal conversation and stuff like that, I am able to function just as well or almost as well as an average quote unquote normal functioning person. Um, it all depends. What I do is I choose whether or not to act weird or act strange or different. Um, I can choose to mask that or not show it what I want. So when it comes to my music, I show it and I show it off, you know? So uh, that's basically it. Thank you for listening. This was quite long. I don't know if this is going to sound good or not. Um, I'm going to listen to it at some point, but it's probably long and boring. And I think you are probably going to be agreeing uh, with that statement right there. Um, but I hope my points made it across. Thank you. Thank you very much. Like and subscribe. And thank you for listening. And I, I would be really surprised if you made it this far. And um, if you made it this far, then give a likes up for yourself too. You made it. If you could, If you can make it as far as to listen all the way to right here, right now, then not only do you need a thumbs up, you need a pat on the back. But because of the coronavirus situation, make sure the other person is using a glove or actually maybe do an air pat um, from six feet away, you know, um, and then I'll transact to, but make sure they're wearing a glove. Um, that'll transact to it qualifying as a pat on the back, you know, and I applaud you for listening this far because... Um, I don't think I would have been able to do that, but I am going to do it at some point. I'm determined to do it, you know? And if you determine to do something, you can do it. If you believe you can achieve, you know? Always eat your fruits and vegetables, stay in school, work hard, put your 100%, you know? Do everything you got to do, you know? So, thank you. Bye-bye.